Okay, welcome back to the crew. We are joined by Pratish and Marlon, ADI trainers. Marlon, give us a little bit of background on your job description, what you do and how long you've been doing it, all that stuff. Uh, yep, so I've been in the industry for just over a decade. Okay. Um, I'm a DVSA registered audit trainer and DVSA registered fleet trainer. I'm a grade A instructor as well. And yet yeah, my day-to-day -day job mainly entails just training people to be driving instructors for the part one, part two, and part three test um, with a bit of fleet training as well. Lovely. Okay. So a lot of qualifications there. Practice is pretty much the same, but I think you gave up the audit badge. You're just focusing on... I gave on... up my, my fleet badge. Yeah. So you're just doing the driving instructor so training? Instructor training and normal road training as well. Cool. Um, now today we're going to be doing a part three test or part three training. So this is the last test to become a driving instructor. Yeah. Would you give me, because you're better, both, by the way, Pratish and Marlon are better qualified than I am for this role. So would you help me understand what exactly part three involves and what it is that we would do in part three training? Okay, yes. So the part three training is all about your instructional ability. Okay. Um, so <laughs> you'll be... Fail already. <laughs> no, you're, you're in good hands. You'll all be right, fine. Cool. I'm nervous. Go so on. you'll be marked on 17 competencies. Okay, um, wow. And then to pass the part three test, you have to score a minimum a minimum of 31 or above. Okay. And for the risk management section, yep. you have to score above seven. Yeah, I remember you teach me about the risk management, yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, are we going to be doing this? This, me driving uh, or I'm gonna be sitting here and instructing you and then you're gonna give me some feedback based on what we cover that's it exactly right. because it's all about your instructional ability mm -hmm. you're the instructor and um, I'll be dipping in and out of role <laughs> as a sort of learner driver cool. and seeing uh, how we can improve your skills all right I think there's gonna be a lot of improvement now what we're gonna do this is my um, get out of jail free card here is I am going to try to make a little bit of mistakes. So yeah. things that I might normally say, I'm going to try and leave out. And I think Marlon is going to try to commit some driver faults, which you wouldn't normally do as well. Yes. So that we can actually go into some of the training and help people that are looking to become driving instructors effectively. That's it, exactly. I think that would be a good plan. Lovely. And if anyone does want to get in touch with Marlon or practice for driving instructor training, look into the description. You'll find their contact details there and you can get directly in touch with both of the driving instructor trainers. Okay? Yeah, cool. All right, so we're going to get started. So what we're going to do for this part three is I'm going to do pretty much what I did on my real part three. So I'm going to do junctions with you. I'm going to be doing the left turns and right turns, okay? Okay. And then we look at possibly doing one of the manoeuvres, maybe the parallel park or reverse park as it's called now, okay? Yeah. So it's pretty basic stuff, not too complicated, and um, we'll see how I get on, basically. Okay. okay. So that we'll we'll good. start the part three from now then, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah we okay. can go into it. So I'll play the role then of a learner driver. Yeah. Who's had a, a few lessons before. Yeah. Um, maybe we can say that I've done junctions once or twice yep. but there's been a long break okay maybe i went away on holiday and mm -hmm. studies um sort of crept in so yeah this is the first time we're meeting after a couple months yeah so. all right okay so nice to meet you marlon my name is scott what should i call you i'll stay as marlon even though i'll role play that learner driver cool all right and um we can imagine that pratish is the examiner in the back if you like so if you are going to do a part three Oh, hang on. doesn't work like that. It'll be me, student, examiner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So today, Marlon, I understand that you've been doing some left and right turns before. Um, you've had a bit of a break. So you did holiday, nice pina coladas in Barbados somewhere, I heard. Yeah. yeah lucky yeah. man. Oh, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. <laughs> Living life. <laughs> um, and also, you, you're studying at the moment, I hear. So you probably just completed your exams. And obviously, you focus on the exams first, get that done. That's what I say to my students. And then focus on the driving after because i find if people try to do both at the same time it's a little bit more you know have you ever had a student that's doing uni and they've got exams coming up and they're still trying to do the driving test yeah, at the same time it's, it's, it's a bit time. difficult so you prioritize that and now here you are and you're looking to get your driving license effectively yeah okay. that's the aim that's the plan all right so we're going to look at your left and right turns to start off with 
and yep. then we'll take it from there okay. okay so the vehicle is quite a large vehicle obviously it's x amount of tons so we're probably looking at about a two ton vehicle something around that range so we do have passengers in the car as well which can affect the equilibrium of the car it's just little things to mention and have you taken any uh medication that i need to be notified about anything like that um no no, no? so you're all good yeah, yeah. fit and healthy fit and healthy all right so um you are aware how to start this vehicle just to double check um yes so yeah. i go uh go into to D and okay. uh, yeah it looks like it's already on lovely so, okay so in your own time then Marlon what I'd like you to do is drive on and at the end of the road I'd like you to turn left please yeah okay, okay. when you're ready Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, Marlon, let's practice pulling up and stopping on the left. See how you get on with that one. So anywhere that's convenient, I'd like you to pull up on the left. Yeah, sure. Lovely, brilliant. And then you know how to secure the car? Yeah, pan yeah. brake on, into park. Cool, lovely. And we can see the P displayed there on the dashboard. All right, lovely. Nice smooth start, by the way. Really good. I was watching your observations, and you did do effective observations. Um, we could possibly lean a little bit more to the left and look out the back, although there's no real immediate danger there, so it wouldn't be 100% necessary, but okay. it is good practice. Excellent looking over your right shoulder to check your blind spot and yeah. signaling to move off. I believe that's good practice to signal when we move off, just in case anyone comes around. Okay? Yeah. Now, when we reached the end of the road, I did notice you checked your mirrors. So that's really good. Well done. You checked your interior mirror, your left mirror, and you applied your signal. The only thing is that we really want it in the order that I just mentioned. So I wow. noticed that we signaled first and then checked the mirrors after. Uh, okay. Is there any reason why you would check the mirrors after as opposed to before the signal? Is that something that your previous instructors might have explained to you or covered with you? Um, yeah, I think they said it can, I need to see what's there and it can help me time the signal if I put it on after checking the cool, mirror. Cool, lovely. So we'll try and practice that with the next junction. We'll do another left turn. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, the position when we reach the end of the junction it's fairly good. You were nice and close to the left, which is good for a left turn. Okay. Just make sure that we have a safe distance from the curb. So I noticed as we did our left turn, we were a little close. Possibly maybe the back wheel might have slightly got a bit close to the curb, which could maybe damage the back tire. So if we give a little bit of a safe gap, we could possibly, uh, you know, increase that safety there. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if anyone's ever given you a reference point before for left turns so that you know when to begin to steer left. I don't know if that's um, something that's been mentioned to you. No, no. Yeah. Never, okay. Never so we're talking about that. reference points now. Okay, yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a hand with a reference point when we get there. I can explain it now, which might be beneficial, but I notice from my students, most people learn from actually seeing it yeah so I'll try not to talk while you're driving because okay. I notice that does distract a lot of people when they're learning yeah I'm the same um, if it's necessary and it's safe to do so I might ask you just to pause and maybe we can have a look at the reference point now what the reference point is is when we reach the end of the road you'll see the corner itself out the front windscreen okay and as we get closer that corner is going to disappear down behind this dash and we won't see it anymore Okay. When the corner disappears on the left, so that left corner disappears, yeah. we steer. Ah, oh, that's when I that start That way, steer. yeah, we won't steer too early and maybe cut the corner. Because if we steer a bit early or if we're very close, we may have the back wheel gently roll over the curb, which possibly could damage. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, but we'll try to avoid that possible. Okay. So we've got two things, mirrors before signal. Yeah. And then when we get to the end of the road, I may or may not mention it. I'll be quiet if I can. And we're just gonna watch to see the corner disappear before 
we start, start to steer to left. Any, okay. Any questions about the reference points? Um, uh, no, so look for the corner. When it disappears, start to turn. Mm -hmm. And just remember mirrors before I signal. Lovely. And really good pulling up to park here. Nice, because you've yeah. got some nice alloy wheels on this car. <laughs> oh, yeah, they are quite fancy, aren't they, on this car? It's uh, not too bad. <laughs> it's always a, a relief for me when it's someone else's car and the student's pulling up on the left. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take your time, Marlon, when you're ready and it's safe. Drive on. And at the end of the road, turn left please okay so into D and then um Excellent, really nice left blind spot check there. Sometimes it may not be as necessary, but it is definitely good practice. Excellent right blind spot check. Well done, okay. excellent signal, very good move away. And then at the end of the road, you obviously know this spot just for sake of it, turn it left. Left, yeah, okay. Hmm. Very good, well done. Excellent speed on the approach. Well done. Have you seen the corners disappeared now? Disappeared now, Notice you yeah. started to steer at that point. So just keep Fantastic. Steering. Much better. Well done. Very, very good. Yeah. Okay. Safer distance there from the curb. And very good observations at the junction. You look right, left, right, which is the minimum. You can check more, but very, very good. I've noticed your observations are excellent. Okay, uh, let's go past this next white car. I think that's the old version of this one. Okay. And then just after, if it's safe. I'd just like you to pull up and stop on the left. On this occasion, I'm not too worried about driveways. We're not going to be too long. So if you need to stop in front of one of the driveways, then that will be fine. Okay. Lovely. Okay. All right. Nice. And then just secure the car. Brilliant. Okay, Marlon. So it looks like we had some good progress there. Yeah, it felt better. What we're going to do here is we're going to come out of the role play now. So we'll just go back to being Scott and Marlon, normal Scott and Marlon, yep. or driving instructor trainer Marlon. <laughs> um, so if we step out of the part three exercise now and we'll take the time out, yep. would you be able to give me some driving instructor training feedback now about what we just covered? Of course I can. So yeah, at the beginning, um, I like the things that you mentioned. You spoke about the gap that I've had in my in my learning, in my driving, so that was good. Um, other things you could have done, mainly just to cover risk management, is just ask a couple of recap questions. Um, just about, maybe you could say, so just talk me through how you're going to go to the end of the road and turn left. Just in case there's any gaps in my knowledge, you can then fill them in, and that just manages the risk. Um, scaling can be something as well that Ooh, you scaling. That this you is something in. I haven't heard of before. What's scaling? Uh, scaling. So you could just say, well, it's been a while since you've uh, done any driving. So on a scale of zero to ten, okay. how confident oh, are you feeling? Today? Yes, you taught me that. I remember now. It's yes, been a while. Sorry, Mark. That's okay. <laughs> Patch is like, I told him this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that can be good. Um, yeah. Just because it's from very low on the scale. It then gives you the option to maybe consider offering a briefing or an yep. explanation if cool. I maybe forgot a lot. Lovely. Um, okay. Yeah, I'd say those were the main things. Right. Um, other thing as well, again, just to manage the risk is yep. just to agree before we start yep. on the level of support. Okay. So All right. we're going to say, yeah, we're going to go to the end of the road and turn left and do some left turns. Mm -hmm. um, do you need any support from me? Cool. Or can I leave it all to you to nice. do it by yourself? Nice. That's really good. I like that because even though I did get my A grade on my part, well, sorry, my standards check, yeah. my constructive feedback was that I didn't give that student that what you just said. So asking them, do you need any support? How much support or, you know, I talk too much. Okay, yes. And yeah, it's a big part. One of the competencies does mention about sharing responsibility. And that's a good example of it. So that you're making the pupil aware of what their responsibilities are. It could be mirror signal position. And maybe your responsibilities are to prompt them on the speed and where to look. I left that out as well, didn't I? Set of responsibilities. Okay. All right. Um, any more constructive feedback? Um, I like the way you identify the faults. Okay. And overall, mm -hmm. your fault analysis was mm -hmm. good. Okay. Um, it's interesting you said generally you talk a bit too much. 
because that would be the only learning point I'd give you in default analysis. Try and draw more of the answers out of me if you can, rather than telling me, um, you know, you want to be checking mirrors first before signalling, telling me about the dangers. Ah, so it's telling rather than asking. More asking, mm, yeah. Because you're at that level of asking, aren't you? That's you're sort it. of the intermediate kind of level. Yeah, I've done it before, mm -hmm. so I should have a little idea. And it can then give you a good idea of to mm -hmm. where I am, sort mm. of, uh, in terms of my knowledge, what I remember. Right, let's see if we can the quickly other, bullet the point other, that. The other thing was, before mm -hmm. you start, is having the agreement between you and the pupil as to what they want to do. Yes, so guess, yes, tell yes. Tell them what they, what they should be doing. You ask. Always ask, asking, what, what do you want to achieve today? What yeah. do you want to get out of your lesson today? Good. Yeah, that's a good point. So this is really important that there's two levels of teaching, if you like, isn't there? There's the very beginner level, which is very much tell. Yeah, and then obviously guided, guided. okay, and independent. Yeah. Okay, so free, guided, prompted, independent. Yeah. So you're more of the independent level, then I guess, where I'd be either asking you if you need support, and then asking you rather than telling you what to do because you're higher up that chain, aren't you, to the independent level? Yeah, it's um, it's a big part of the part three test now since it changed. Mm -hmm. It's all about client centered learning. Okay. Um, that's sort of the key point and the best way to make it client centered mm -hmm. is just to keep asking the client right. anything else you want to achieve today would you like to do some more left turns or would okay. you like to do something different excellent and how much support would you like from me okay and yeah that way it's all client centered right I'm trying to remember all of this now yep, so if anyone's watching you try to remember as well it's a lot to remember yeah um, so what I'm going to try and do is test my memory now because we're going to move on if that's okay unless Sounds there's good. anything else that no, I've missed or left out. We do have a vehicle in front, so I'm going to move into doing a manoeuvre with you in a second. But yes. just before we look at doing the reverse park, parallel park, I'm going to try to bullet point the pieces of information that were just given to me. Okay. So, first of all, I'm going to kind of ask you where you're at, what level you're at, have you done it before, see where you are. So get some knowledge from you to try Q and find Q &A. out. Q &A. Q &A. That's Q &A. it, good Q&A, yeah. Yep. Then I'm going to ask you the scaling, because I remember you said about the scaling. So on a zero being don't know and 10 being completely independent, where you are with your reverse park exercise. Yeah. So that'd be the scaling. And then the last bit of information was, well, we had the risk analysis as well, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So the risk analysis, just to quickly briefly cover that again, would be um more of what are your responsibilities in this or what are the risks of possibly carrying out this exercise yeah I, whose responsibility is it that's it okay. so i always say you've got the risk management statement yeah which is sort of what you say at the beginning of every lesson where yep. you're letting them know that they've got a responsibility and a duty of care mm -hmm. to manage the risk for everybody inside the car and outside okay. of the car but this car's fitted with a dual brake so, we so can you're sharing that share that, ris that and responsibility that's it and then yeah. the sharing responsibility is more mm -hmm. to do with the support mm -hmm. that you're giving so okay we're going to try this maneuver mm -hmm. um can I leave it to you to do independently the mm -hmm. whole maneuver or mm -hmm. would you like any support from me? Okay, brilliant. Um, I think that covers it. So three bullet points there for me. I'd say those are the main, yeah. Main Q and A, points. ask you on a scale and then ask and you. Setting your goal. And the goal is to complete the exercise safely. By end safely. of this lesson, you will uh, be able to achieve. Good. That's your it. Yes. Yeah. So that learning has taken place. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very important because you're scored on that, aren't you, effectively? Yes, yeah. that's Has the main objective. Has learning taken place? Okay. Okay, yeah. So, we're going to jump back into the role play now. Sounds good, yeah. My brain is hurting right now, <laughs> so <laughs> let's see if I can do my best. All right, so, um, Marlon, um, I'm not too sure if you have covered the reverse park before. Is that something that you've done or something that's been mentioned um, before? Yeah, it was a good while ago now i done it. Um, yeah, a good while ago, but I, okay. I have done it before. All right, so on a scale of 1 to 10 or 0 to 10, 0 being no idea and 10 being completely independent, what score would you give you for the parallel or reverse park, depending on what you want to call it? Uh, to be honest with you, it was always a bit hit and miss. Okay. You know, sometimes I'd get it, sometimes I wouldn't, so maybe somewhere in the middle four or five okay all right so you've got a middle grade there all right brilliant so um with this exercise um 
what's the risks? What's the danger or what responsibilities have we got when we're doing a parking? Um, I suppose there's other cars like cool. this one that Very you've got good. to be careful of. So you want to make sure that when we move out it's safe and where we position is reasonably safe so that those cars don't... Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, cool. So you mentioned about the oncoming traffic. Just realised I kind of answered that for you rather than asking you why what's going to happen there but I'm going to move on anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, so you talked about oncoming cars. Any other responsibilities or risks? Um, yeah, I suppose that lady just walked by, so pedestrians, pedestrians could be Cool. Around. And how would they impact on you, or how would you impact on them if you were doing a reverse park? Mm. Yeah, I suppose... Could they walk around the back of the vehicle as yeah, you're trying to reverse? they could yeah. be walking around the back. That's quite common. So if, if you were worried about any other road users or pedestrians, maybe you know being near the vehicle, what do you believe would probably be a safe option for us to do? probably better to stop isn't yeah it? very good all right yeah. um before we move away if we stop would we need to check around the vehicle to make sure there's no more pedestrians or cars coming before we move off after stopping um yeah I yeah think so. all right cool now we're gonna we're gonna have a look at doing this shortly okay. um would you like me to leave you to do this independently like what level do you think you're at or would you like to be guided a little bit um well yeah maybe i can give it a try yeah first time and sort of see how i get on that's um, that's always what people choose normally i give them two options do you want yeah. to do it by yourself <laughs> or do you want me to teach you how to do it and most people say they just want to do it yeah just give it a yeah. go yeah maybe i can give it a go if it doesn't go right then definitely help cool. me out and take sounds good to there. me so when you're ready what i'd like you to do is use this white vehicle in front when okay. we do do the exercise, there is a driveway there, but just for the purpose of the exercise, disregard the driveway. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to move out, stop next to the white car, and then reverse park. Okay, sure. Yeah. Take All your right. time when you're ready. Maybe wait for that van. Very good decision. Yeah. Excellent much safer isn't it because he might decide to go into one of the driveways yeah could do excellent really nice blind spot check again well done okay. Okay. nice this is a good start position well done yeah Maybe wait for this car. Excellent, good decision again. Yeah, we're okay. very observant about the oncoming traffic. Well done. Shouldn't have got enough room. Yeah, I was just looking at that, at your start position. I think it's fairly decent. And yes, the vehicle passed safely. So that's excellent positioning for your manoeuvre. Well done, that's very important. Yeah, okay. Fantastic. Very good, I see you watching the gentleman there with his dog, well yeah. done. going too good all right no problem we can just kind of stop here for a second yeah, yeah. all right if you just put the car into park for me we're in yeah, a reasonably sure. safe position okay and traffic can pass us we're not really obstructing too much it's quite quiet here. okay so with the actual maneuver itself it's really good okay okay the only issue is where we've stopped here and you actually identified that so i heard you say oh i think i'm a bit far away from the pavement yeah so yeah we're a little bit far you might be able to see that in your blind spot mirror so that could be very useful okay. um is that something that you've had on your previous vehicles a little blind spot mirror there that can no to be honest this is the cut? first time i've noticed it in right. the office. Yeah. very useful they're okay. very cheap about three pound 
from I won't mention any names but most people shop online but you can get those there very yeah. good and if you look at this mirror the little circle blind spot mirror can you actually see the pavement in that circle mirror yeah I don't know what you can see yeah so. I can see all bit, bit of the back wheel arch and the, lovely the pavement all right cool so that could be a useful tool to see where we are in relation to the curb okay. now this is the only part that I've identified as something that we'd want to work on just finishing distance how far you are from the curb yeah so I'm gonna give you a reference point I'm not too sure if you've been taught any reference points um, maybe a long time ago but I can't really okay remember. cool so I'm just gonna add that to your skill set by okay. just giving you a reference point okay yeah. if it doesn't work or you're not too sure what I'm trying to explain to you please ask me Just say Scott you're not making any sense whatsoever yeah would you explain that in a different way or I'm not getting it okay okay right so what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna kind of show it to you all okay. right uh, before we move yeah. okay so I'm actually gonna take control of the vehicle just for yeah. safety reasons I'm just gonna hold the foot brake to make sure the car doesn't move okay? okay so I'm gonna do that now what I'd like you to do is push up on the right lever to put it into reverse okay yeah. and remember I've got control of the vehicle it's completely safe okay there's a tiny little yellow line just there can you see it oh yeah yeah, yeah. we're gonna look at that when we do the maneuver Okay. And I'm going to ask you, when we're doing the manoeuvre, to keep coming back as you do your turn. Yeah. Keep coming back to the kerb until this little line touches the edge of the pavement. Ah. So that's going to be our reference point. Now, if you don't have this camera and you don't have this car, what we'd like to do, that's helping us with knowing that we're at the correct angle, is you see the tree here, the nice rounded tree yeah, oh, in yeah. the garden. And then just after it, we've got this kind of scruffy bush with the white flowers. Yes. That's the angle that we want to be facing. Okay. So if we call it like a clock, 12 o'clock straight, one o'clock rounded bush, if you like, or rounded tree. Yeah. And then two o'clock could be like where the white flowers are in the scruffy bush. Okay. That's the angle. And that line helps you with the angle. So once you've reached that angle, that little line will probably be somewhere near or touching the curb. Okay. So if you don't have the camera, if you don't have the reference point that you have here, it's a two o'clock angle, which is roughly 45 degrees to 50 degrees. And this is where it turns into a math lesson <laughs> yeah. and most people will tune out. Okay. Yeah. So reference points can be very useful. If not, knowing the clock, two o'clock can be very useful and that works for a lot of people as well okay. okay there's other methods you can do one two one steering but i think it's too much i prefer full lock full lock okay personally so yeah. um let's have another look and we're just going to look at that little line and we're going to see how that matches up with the curb and then we'll look out the window and see if we're facing the bush so it's just that objective of finding the angle yeah. that's all we're just trying to look at now okay? okay so if you continue to do what you're doing when we get to the angle we're going to analyze that and have a look and see the reference point okay okay and then at the end we'll find out how you get on and then we can take it from there yeah hopefully it goes better this time <laughs> okay what i'd like you to do is just put the car back into park i'm still holding the oh, brake yeah. Yeah. thank you very much i'm going to take my foot from the brake now okay and you have full control of the vehicle okay if you'd like to reverse please do if you feel comfortable with this position just move out and stop yourself in a similar position that you did last time and then we're going to go over doing the reverse park again okay. when you're ready unless you have any questions move out stop and begin your reverse park when it's safe to do so yeah sounds good okay Okay, lovely. So nice position again. It is roughly a door width, which is nice. I believe there's enough room for the yellow van to get past us. He doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. Yeah, I so hope so. It's a good position. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very good. nice. Well done. It's very similar to what you did last time. So yeah. when you're ready, I'd like you to begin your reverse park. Okay. Maybe just stop for this car behind. 
Very good. Uh, while we're stopped here, well done on your observations again. Uh, you looked all the way around the vehicle. Yeah. May I just suggest that instead of checking the left side last, yeah. check the right side last, just because that's where the main danger is with the traffic that's overtaking. Ah. So if we check that side, we'll call it the most dangerous side, because that's where that's the fast that. moving big lumps of metal are. Yeah. That might be more beneficial for the observations. Okay. okay. Well done. That makes sense. Okay. Excellent with your full lock, very nice. Well done, you had a little bit of motion there as you were steering, which was good. Yeah, okay. Lovely, so yeah, we're gonna keep it going. If you're watching that line, very nice. Just make that line touch the curb. It looks like it's somewhere there. Yeah, pretty and much. And does it look like we're facing the scruffy bush with the white flowers? We're exactly yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is how I teach. Uh, it looks yeah. like that vehicle may not be able to pass, so we can continue. Okay. So this is the point where we would now start to steer right. Steer right Generally, yeah. I teach full lock to the right, so full I would suggest you do a full lock steering to the right. Okay. Very nice. Excellent, very good job, nice smooth, excellent observations. As the traffic starts to get closer and passing, yeah. I would probably recommend just coming to a stop. So very good, well done. There's enough room for people to pass us, so we'll stay stationary until the vehicles have passed. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a yeah, lot there's quite there, a lot, yeah. Excellent, well done. We'll just let everyone get past. Really good with your manoeuvre so far, and you can see it looks like it's going to be in a good finishing position. But then yeah, we just stay quiet, and then we'll have a look at the end when we get there. Okay. Oh, she's playing with her phone. That doesn't look good. No, it doesn't. Okay. Very observant. Well done. Yeah. Love those observations. And then you've got your little blind spot mirror, can be oh, useful yes. as well. Lovely. All right, and just secure the car. Yeah. Cool. So did the reference point help? Did any of that? That helped a lot. Yeah, yeah massively, that reference point. I'm going to remember that. Got me pretty much. It looks into a you good position. Yeah, it's very nice. Well done. Um, so just add into your skill set there, and I yeah. hope that helps you in future with your reverse parking. Yeah, yeah. yeah any questions will. about the reference point or any um, other things on your mind? No. What, what do you do if there's no camera? Yeah, so it's more about the reference point, looking out the window, finding an angle of roughly 45 degrees, 50 degrees. It, this is where people will tune off, I know. But <laughs> it's really about finding that angle, I find. And that's the Two o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, two o'clock, yeah. Um, that bush is... So how would we do it without the camera if, if the car didn't have a, a camera in it? Right, so we would want to maybe use other reference points. So we could use the door mirror here the external mirror on the left there are methods where you see the pavement reappear in that mirror okay um also you can use door handles lining up with certain points on the vehicle as well personally i don't teach that way because i find it's so much information for the students they usually don't remember it so i usually teach a two o'clock angle and full lock full lock but everybody's different cool all right um so uh let's just do the end of the role play if you like just step back into the role play yeah so marlon well done on your exercise it was very good definite progress there as well i hope the reference points uh worked for you how do you feel about your driving how do you feel about that maneuver that you just did yeah i think the reference point makes the world of difference um you're able to see it line it up i know exactly when to start turning the wheel and the end result was pretty much perfect lovely yeah brilliant i would agree and um, so moving forwards with future lessons i think it would be more going into doing your right turns possibly so just the next lesson plan would probably be right turns maybe going over the left turns that we did today in the parallel parking just to reinforce it but i'm very happy with your progress today so well done yeah, yeah okay really good you. sounds good okay any questions for me before we jump out the role play um no i think you covered most things lovely yeah, okay so done. if we go into driving uh i gotta remember this driver instructor trainer That's modes it. now yes um and just let me know 
how badly I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't bad at all, Scott. I could see you tried to improve on those areas we found when we first sort of done the run. Um, it was good. You asked me what I would like to work on, asked me the scaling, where I'd scale myself. Lovely. Um, and you gained agreement, which is key, as to how much support I'd want. Lovely. Um, only things again to mm -hmm. manage the risk. When I said, uh, yep, I'll uh, give it a go by myself. Yes. It's always nice just to say, okay, before you give it a go, mm -hmm. just talk me through roughly what you're going to do or okay. how you're going to do it. Lovely. That yes. way if I say something completely out of the, yes. out of the box, you can then nip it in the bud before yep. we've actually given it a try. Lovely. That's it. Um, yeah, I'd say that was the main thing. Um, tiny bit of over-instructing. Yeah, you do like I to realize talk, that. I so realize that. You can always that, yeah. try and hold back a bit. I think when you got me to look the opposite way, mm. it was more telling me the dangers. Mm. Would have been nice uh, to ask. ask again. Yes. That's it. But um, overall, no, it was a good um, a good lesson of how to uh, fix that fault I had in the mm. parallel park, which was good. Excellent. All right. Um, if we can imagine that Pratish is the examiner here in the back. It looks like I've failed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, you did pretty well. Yeah, All right, you okay. Covered, you covered most of the points. Right. Uh, in the end, you should have asked him to scale. Okay. Um, oh, himself. And, and okay. Feedback. Before yeah. you said he did really well, you should have asked him for his feedback. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, that's good so advice. So you should ask yeah. for his feedback first. Then, uh, well, before the feedback, you should ask him to scale himself. Mm, okay, so the scale again yeah. on, on the student, on himself, how, how, how they progressed. The That's it, thing. exactly. Okay. See if I've gone up. Good, course, so scaling is a very important point. Yeah, mm. I always say to think of a feedback sandwich yeah, feedback. when doing the summary. And, and, and get the feedback right from, yeah. from the That's pupil. It. Yeah, cool. Any and other. You can add your bit to it. Okay. Okay. Uh, there were times when uh, you were silent. Okay. Uh, when he did an excellent mm -hmm. observation, maybe mm -hmm. you should have just given him a bit more praise and said, okay. excellent, well done, yep. uh, very good observations. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, yeah, pretty good. You did give him praise at times. Lovely. Uh, so it's good. It was quite a good lesson. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd agree. I would have definitely passed you there if I All right. was enough. And if we did have, I ignore that. If we did have a scaling sheet with us. Where would I say, I like using that word now. See, I'm trying to reinforce that word, scaling, into my memory. Uh, I'd would say I... near, near enough to an A. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd say a low grade A, very high grade B, but in and around there. Shut up, I'll so, take so, that. Yeah. Don't <laughs> even mention Bs. It's good. <laughs> I've been Scott, this has been Marlon, this has been Parrish. If you want to jump down into the description and comments and stuff, please do. You'll find the details there. And, and, yeah. and this would be good for other trainees to have a look at. Yes. Yeah, this would be great. All right, and if you need any help, Reach out to Marlon and Pratish. Yeah. Cool. All right. See you later. All right.